What's up everybody, Raul Sax Creo with another video and it's regarding my backyard. I am doing a 2019 renovation. I am completely changing everything due to the construction that got <laughs> done on my house, excuse me. So right now I'm headed to Home Depot, pick up some materials, it's supposed to rain later, but we'll see how that works out. I will take you step by step on how to do a landscape border around anything you wanted to put around. This so happens to be around my patio. So it will be a patio border with plants, mulch, weed fabric, and so on. So I'll give you my way of doing it. There's multiple ways you can do it. Everyone's gonna have their two cents about it, but this is my way. And if you have a little bit of time and money and you wanna upgrade your property, make it nice, do a little something to it, and this so happens to be what you wanna do, just follow the steps of my video and you'll get it done. So thank you for uh, subscribing, staying tuned to my videos and being loyal and hopefully I put out some good content for you guys that is actually useful and not just something that's gonna bore you but enough with the talking let's get to the video what's up everybody Raul Sax Carrillo here with another garden video well it's kind of garden slash lawn video but it is raining outside Can you hear that so this is my horrible lawn right now. Um, I did have nice Kentucky bluegrass back here, but I did let it die off with all the construction going on here with the house and the patio and stuff like that. So now I've been working on landscaping, uh, putting the plants and changing everything up back here. So I did do this uh, landscape border here. Uh, this side's pretty much almost getting there. Uh, I'm just doing plant placement and stuff, putting stuff, moving stuff. Um, brick wall just went up, so I gotta fix this little corner here. Uh, other thing too is um, I wanna do something different as far as right here by the patio, excuse the mess, but I just wanna show you guys. Um, for the 2019 season, this is gonna be changed. Um, I'm gonna completely change out the backyard. I'll put some videos, actually I'll put a picture up of what this whole backyard looked like before and what it looks like now. So you can see the difference of this border I put up here with the bricks and the trees and the tree ring around the orange tree and the plants here and the new patio um, you'll see the backyard how it looked before and I'll put a picture again here and now I'm gonna work on something here so let me line this up so you'll get a better example of what I'm talking about okay some of you might say it's raining why are you gonna be doing a project right now in the rain well most of the section that I'm gonna be working on right now is actually covered by the patio and I'm kind of bored so I want to do something so eh, if it doesn't work then I just stop if it works then hey I get something done today but the plants I want to put in this area I'm going to show you right now are these two plants which are the quarter lines right here and this other type of plant here I don't really know how to pronounce but it's I'll show you guys right here uh calico purple or something uh, yeah I know I butchered the crap out of that name but um, I know someone's gonna make fun of me, but there it is. Um, got these at Home Depot, picked these up. Uh, so what I wanna do here is basically I wanna fill up this backyard kind of, you know, like my own personal little oasis. So I wanna make it feel like when I come back here, it's like a vacation. So what I did here, which pretty much everyone else does is you get a water hose and you mask the border around how you pretty much want it to wrap around where you want it to start and end and what you do is you either get a weeder or an edger and you go ahead and edge that line and then what you do is you go ahead and dig this out and then you you know so on and so on the next step next step next step you know filling it in you know if you want to lay down some uh, weed fabric barrier if you want to put a border, if you want to put bricks, 
Uh, you can change it up how you like, whatever fits your needs. But today I'm gonna be edging this and then scalping off the whole top layer, get rid of some of this dead grass and hopefully take out the roots. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline each side, which is outside and inside with this border here um, that I picked up, which I'm actually using over there towards the back against the house. Um, I put that for a certain reason. I'm not going to get into that. And it doesn't look like I'm going to succeed today because it is starting to rain pretty good today. Ah, okay. And this is going to flood up. But hey, at least I went today and bought the stuff. But I'll give you guys the step-by-step -step process of how it's coming out. And stay tuned because this is my project for 2019. This will be the backyard my landscape project quickly let me show you guys what i did here so i'm planning to put the palms here but i did do the bricks weed fabric and then mulched it palm palm tropicanus and so on um, i'm still working on this section what i want to do here so for right now this is not filled in but i will be putting palms and then I'll be working on that section over there. Yep, this ugly grass and full of weeds, but I am working on it. So here we go. This is how it's gonna be. Doesn't look like much now, but this is, I'm gonna edge this up with my edger. And then I'm going to fill this in with the plants, but right now I'm getting an idea of how I want it to be. <laughs> There's hope for you. Thanks, babe, <laughs> for the filming. I know. Dedication, dedication. <laughs> for those angles. For those angles, for those close-ups. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, pretty much did the outline. Got a nice close-up. Hopefully that was useful footage. Thanks to my babe. Better be. Or else that mud would be for nothing. <laughs> you gotta use it either way. <laughs> this is what happens when you do a project in the rain and you're not supposed to. <laughs> Things are gonna get muddy. You need to get all full of dirt, but okay. So once you got it outlined, go over it a couple more times, make it pretty deep, go deeper and deeper inside. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> and then you're going to do the outs. I mean, you did the outside now, and then we're going to do the inside and then we're going to scrape all this out. And then and now we're going to have fun with the mud. So a couple more cuts and then next step. Okay, another useful step that you might actually consider too is get an edger here. And what you're gonna do is you step down and then pull up. Step down, pull up. And you're gonna keep following your border until you're all the way through. But don't get crazy and yank on it and pull it all up. You don't want stuff flying everywhere. She's gonna make a mess, especially in the rain. Doing this one handed, so bear with me, people. See, like that. And then the other side will look like this. You get closer for you. So right where you want it. Step. And pull up. You see that? I mean, if you don't have an edger or a weeder, 
you can use this to do your whole border just having the edger will actually put that clean line in there for you and using the water hose as your outline will make a big difference but any tool will work edger a weeder a self edger here not a self edger but you know turf edger um and that'll get the job done so what i'm showing you here is you're gonna go deep and you're gonna pull this out and the reason for that is what i'm trying to get is i want this stuff here to go on the inside and the outside and this has a depth indicator on it which is located here so what i'm trying to accomplish is getting all this to sit inside so this much is on top and this is going to be what's going to kind of block the grass from growing in because back here i'm going for bermuda and i want that low cut here so the dogs the kids it'll be aggressive in growing back if it gets damaged and also low so when summertime comes and you use a slip and slide you know you're not slicking down the grass like tall fescue or kentucky bluegrass and you know it's like that suavecito slick back look on your grass you don't want that on your grass it doesn't look good because next day it starts turning yellow so you know bermuda is where i'm going for in the back and i have the kentucky bluegrass growing in the front but that's an, another day another time i'll show you so you want to go really deep and then you want this <laughs> be quiet babe <laughs> um okay see i'm losing track here people are going to dislike this video right now you got to go, go deep inside okay and that's going to keep most of the roots from growing down the riding zones the solens um you know underground travel above ground travel this is only going to sit so far high i may let this stick up a little bit more just to keep some of that rubber mulch i'm going to be putting in here on the top cover and maybe not so deep down into the ground here so maybe i'll go about this this far and then keep this on the top so we can play with it see how much we're going to put in there um, just in case you guys want to know this type I'm using it's worked great for me um, but I'm gonna continue on with this so remember push down pull back lift this up so that way when you actually go in with the shovel and scrape this up you'll have a good chunk coming out and then of course level it off um, mix in your topsoil with this dig the holes where you want the plants I'm gonna place those in and you can lay your weed fabric if you want to lay that down and then you can cover it with the mulch, rock, whatever you want to do. But um, next step is I'm going to be following this through, pulling it up, and then I'll be scraping it out. So here we go. Okay, so really quick, I had to switch to my phone. GoPro's currently charging. But some of you may ask, why are you showing us a video like this on your YouTube channel? I'm just showing you because I just want to let you know, an average person, if you really want to get something done, you can, just with time and effort and you can make your home look beautiful for your family and it's not that hard i mean you don't have to go out and spend big bucks to do something when you can spend time doing it yourself and appreciate it more and do it how you want so just you know an example here i already pulled up each side and i'm going through each step of filling this in and getting it done so just keep in mind you want something done you want to do it yourself it's not that hard go out and do it and have fun with it in the rain like me so here we go like i explained um i dug each side up um some people have different alternatives on how to do this this would be my method i've done this on other sections it's worked for me i've done it for many people and it's worked for them so now I'm sharing it with you guys as an average person. This is how I do it. If you have a better way of doing it, leave a comment below, help others out. But this is how it is so far. Um, 
the story on this here. Um, when you see all this, I know it has Bermuda in it. What happened here was, I think it was either Bermuda or St. Augustine back here before. I had tilled the whole backyard, dug everything up, and what I think happened was I brought up some seed or whatever happened, and when I did plant the Kentucky bluegrass back here, um, it did get infested with uh, Bermuda. So I just decided to go the route of doing full Bermuda because I like how it looks, how durable it is. You can go really low, and the Kentucky bluegrass is a little bit higher maintenance, which I don't mind for the front. But for the back, um, I want something that's going to be a lot more durable than that because I did notice uh, the Kentucky bluegrass did take a little bit of uh, beating and it didn't really take it as well uh, as far as uh, some of my neighbors that do have the Bermuda grass. Uh, it really holds up and that's what I'm going to need for back here. Here is I'm basically getting the top layer and skinning this off. I know there's still going to be some roots there but I'm going to take care of that little by little. But what I'm doing here is taking off this ugly top layer. And then I do one side, and then I'll work to the other side, and I'll go all the way around. The main thing is I want to get it prepped with the border, and all outlined nicely. See all this mud here? See, that's the nice thing about rain, too, is everything is so soft. Look at that. How many scoops do you want? Ice cream. You want a mud pack? So... That's what I'm gonna do. And I'll work my way to the other side and I'll throw that out. I'll level that all. I'll plant the border where I want it. And then I'm gonna monitor it to make sure none of this that's in here is gonna grow back. But that's the same process that I did over there. And that has been there, I wanna say, maybe six months I've had this section done that a little less and nothing's grown in so far and that side I had a few things growing in so I've sprayed them nothing's grown back so that will be the next step of uh, putting all the plants and where I want them place the palms and then I would weed fabric it and then I would mulch it and I put a thick cover of mulch the thing is you don't want to put a thin layer of mulch either because the sun comes through you and get things to start growing so you want to put a thick barrier on there and then basically around the plant keep it light so that way you can get the moisture in there and the water and the sunlight and stuff like that but you don't want to suffocate the plants either but keep that in mind so let's continue this and then we'll touch back okay so like i explained here once you pull up each side you're going to want to skin the top layer and the goal here sorry that i'm out of breath the goal here is you want it to sit lower than the grass line so that way you can monitor anything that's coming in and you can also put that border here to basically stop the grass from pushing through um, other thing here is sometimes with the concrete or the foundation if you feel that you ran into a situation where some of it's sticking out more past than where you thought it was cut what you can do is set it out a little bit farther where it actually will sit even and then you can put rocks or you can put sand to fill in that section and it'll still look just as nice but one thing too is once you're done scooping this all out you're going to want to go with the edger and just define that line where you're tracking out and then basically just level it off and then go through the same steps there like i was explaining but basically Get this out so you want to get all that those roots out and good thing about this here is with the patio installed in the other patio I was having trouble with grass growing here because this is really shaded so I don't really have to worry about too much of these roots being dug down because this is grass that didn't even make it but I'll just continue taking it down you want the planter to sit a little bit lower and then just fill it up with some good mulch. Just keep that moisture in. And just continue there, okay? 
So now that you have all this dug out, you're going to want to just scoop away the rest with the light rake and then go over one more time, level it down, and then go back with the edger. Okay? Not only do you get something done on your house, you feel good about it, and you get a workout, and you get to enjoy the rain. So next step. Go back through it one more time, pull everything out, edge it, and then we'll go from there. But for now, I have to stop what I'm doing. I will continue the process, and it will be all concluded in this video. But let me cut it short and just tell you that what I did here was how I explained. I took everything out. I will be edging down a little bit deeper, adding the border. This is where the plants are going to be at this height. I will be adding about two, three inches of mulch so it will keep everything protected from the weeds growing through um, the fabric i will be laying and i will prop up the plants a little bit higher than the dirt just to give it that little runoff and i have to stop because it is getting flooded and eventually this is all going to fill i do have a big piece of pvc pipe that i'm going to run out so that i could push the water out into the grass area hopefully that works we're only having about one day of rain uh, right here in california uh, hopefully you can take what I'm showing you here in this video and apply it somewhere in you guys' yard and get something nice going for your family or your own personal home. Uh, I did do that border over there like I explained and that is the same process I did here. So what I'm doing here, you can take it and put it anywhere else and it does work. I have the weed fabric over there, nothing's come up. I choose rubber mulch because it lasts longer in color and the brown one doesn't fade the wood if I mean the brown one rubber mulch doesn't fade and the wood one does so I want something that's long lasting what's up everybody so I'm back doing this project and I'm making a little change here so the other plan I was using um, wasn't gonna work out too good here so the reason for that is because the leaf foliage on that plant, basically when the sun hits it, it dries up a lot quicker. And being that this side hits a lot of sun, and that side gets a lot of sun also, I was worried about these two ends being a little bit more damaged by the sun hitting right here, and not being covered by the patio. So I decided to take those plants back, and then I went with the foxtail ferns. So these are gonna look really great here. Um, they're very durable. Um, little contrast with the green and the, the dark brown foliage there so i think this is going to work out a lot better with my little project i want here so i want to make this background kid friendly got my kids that love to be back here so they like to play games and jump things and use their remote control cars and ride their bikes and my little girl's going to be getting a little hot wheel soon so she's probably going to plow over these so I wanted something a little bit more durable back here. This is what's gonna fit my needs. I'm still working on the projects over there, so excuse the grass and stuff. I'm changing everything up here. I mean, a good thing about plants is if you don't like it, you could always change it. So that's the good thing here. So let's get started on this project. Um, like I said, I'm gonna continue 
to dig this out i'm gonna put the plants in put the border and i'll keep you guys up to date on each stage as i go through it it's kind of hard to do this stuff and record at the same time so i'll do my best to get as much as possible so i decided to go a little bit wider here and now i'm pushing in the border now you got to figure out how far deep you want it to go inside on this case i want it to be a little a little bit over half an inch higher than the grass is um i don't need this sticking up a whole lot i just need this to separate the evasive roots from going into my patio garden bed so if you're having trouble pushing down the border the border is pointy at the bottom but if you're having trouble pushing it down you can use the half moon edger and just track it and then try to push down more into it now i am following my straight edging but if you feel like it's not fully going to where you want it to be you can always fix this later with dirt it's not a big deal just get it as straight as possible push down and then continue with the other side the best thing about this project here is in the beginning part of the video when i told you i had to stop because of the rain this is uh, about two days later the dirt is like really soft so when you're pressing it in it just goes right in when you anchor these down i mean they just go right in so i mean it makes the job a whole lot easier than trying to go in you know picking at it or pushing down in this clay dirt especially in california it is like rock so being that this has been soaked down it is really like soft cake i mean it makes the job easier just keep that in mind a uh, good project for around rainy season i mean that's my opinion all right everybody i got everything placed in the border is pressed along the edges this side i already kind of compressed some of the dirt along it here's where it meets like i said sometimes when you run into stuff like this where your cement doesn't quite allow you to push the border all the way along um, what i'm gonna do being that this is my house right here i'm gonna be satisfied with just filling all this in with sand um, i did it on the other side where it's really not going to be an issue and it's fine it's not a big deal um, but later on if i wanted to you know i could put a little quick set cement or something if i wanted to make it perfect but this floor is cracking that stuff it's not a big deal sand's going to do the job and that's what i'm going for uh you can do however you like when you do your project i'm just showing you my steps of how i'm taking on this project for myself um yeah so hopefully you guys are getting the idea of how to do this project okay one way you can get these edges to sit a lot closer here is one you can either use your foot and just you know press along with the mud or the dirt or the clay whatever you're working with or you can get yourself one of these and basically you just slump down I'm trying to do this one-handed but just so you guys can get the idea of just a weight compacting this in but the way I do it here is I go along the sides and I push it in with my foot just like so make sure it's pushed up nicely along the edge and then I'll throw some more dirt over, put more, get it closer, and then I'll come back with the weight and stamp down at it. And that'll really get this border edging to really set in place and be a little bit more defined than sometimes seeing them and they're all looking like a snake everywhere. See like right here, it's a little, little up. So once I put some more dirt, it's gonna bring us closer. I mean that's why you take your time what's up everybody sun's going down and i'm still getting down um i already dug out all the holes i'm gonna pretty much make sure this is where i want the 
put the plants. I'm gonna pull them all out. And I'm gonna lay the weed fabric, make the cuts, put the plants in, pack them in. And then basically the last day will be is to top dress it with the mulch. And this will be pretty much done. Um, the plants aren't actually gonna sit that far in. Um, I have some dirt I'm gonna throw in mix with it. They're gonna sit a little higher than that, but you always wanna make the hole a little bit bigger than the pot actually is. Sometimes you want it double the size, but in this case with these plants, you don't need to get that too crazy. Um, when you do lay the weed fabric, kind of scoop up as high as you can to the barrier and then basically throw the mulch down heavy just throw a lot in there that's why i wanted it so deep so i could just have a lot of mulch in there so there ain't no sunlight going in there and having anything germinate and then of course you treat it with uh you know you could use a preen um pre-emergent uh weed killer in here uh just not too close to the roots yeah, let's get this going uh, excited I'm just not too excited with all this dirt I have left over. <laughs> but let's go. Okay, quick clip. Uh, I got all the weed fabric laid down. Um, it's a little bumpy in certain sections, but I will push it down flat and against the edges. Once I lay the mulch down, to put some weight. Uh, I pretty much got it where I want it. In the edges there and here the excess i kind of flipped it over laid it flat so kind of double up on the side but uh when you do lay your mulch down or whatever rock stone or any top dressing that you're gonna put down here make sure you work on the edges first and then lay the center so that way you can get it laying all flat and your sides tucked really well because you remember you don't want any of that evasive grass if you do have like St. Augustine or Bermuda anything that creeps under with rhizomes or stolons you don't want them pushing through um, until you gotta be on top of uh, keeping your bed maintenance uh, what I do is if I see something popping up I'll brush it with some glyphosate uh, if I pronounce that right I probably butchered it uh, and what it'll do is it'll just kill off the plant but um i haven't had too much bad luck with any of that stuff coming in uh i did over there on the other side where i put the palms i did that about a year and a half ago and i had some really bad creeping grass growing in there i think it was like bermuda for some reason and i killed it all off and um when i did lay the fabric i laid it really heavy and I did the same step I did here and I haven't had nothing pop in because I, had, I have such a thick layer over here that um, I don't have to worry about anything popping up or regrowing. See here? So I pretty much did the same thing I'm doing over there by the patio just in that same spot. So now that you've seen that, um, I also have done it here with my uh, Thai plants. So it's been working great. So if anyone has a better way of doing it, feel free to drop a comment. You know, it doesn't hurt to have different ways of doing this method. So this is mine. It's worked great. It's worked great over there and then we'll pretty much done, be done with this project and then i'll get all this dirt out of here i'm gonna level off to the lawn a little bit better um i got the guy coming back because he's gonna be filling in some of the holes down there for the water to weep through uh, i don't need that so i tell him just fill these up on that side and then i will level off the lawn there because i have a little puddling issue it dropping down so i'll level that off and then i'm gonna start working on the lawn once uh, springtime starts coming, uh, I'll get a kick on that. But um, here you go, guys. Uh, I know it's nighttime. I don't stop. I keep going. Um, I am working with lights here. It looks dark here. I'm using my phone light to light up this video here. But I do have light here. It, it's working for me. It just doesn't look like that on camera, unfortunately. But remember, tuck and then pack. Pretty much finished up everything. 
It's all done. I got the mulch in. Let me get some light in here for you guys. I will show you in the morning. There you go. I mean, there's still a little work I'm going to do to it, but the main thing is I got the project done. I just got to clean up everything else. I'll be working on this tomorrow. Um, I won't have that much time to work on it, so I'm glad I finished it today because it's supposed to rain um, in two days. I know it should be raining for about three days straight so I want to get this done because I've been prolonging it because of the last video you seen that it started to rain and I just want to get all my little projects done so I can get started on this grass so when springtime hits I can start the next project but there you go you guys there's my border and I'll show you guys in the morning what's up everybody just like I promised the final video well the final clip to the video because yesterday when i was doing the project it got dark and you, i mean you couldn't see anything so i promised you a day shot of the final completion of my patio border i hope you guys find this video useful but let me show you what it looks like during the day so there you go got all the mulch the weed fabric I got everything cleaned up here on the lawn side, leveled it out. Of course, I'm not done, but I'll be getting to that pretty soon as far as the next project. But there you have it the DIY patio border. Now, if you got a little bit of time and effort, like I explained, you can do this yourself around your backyard or front yard. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'll try to get to them as best as possible. Uh, there's other ways of doing this. You can find a ton of ways on YouTube. This is my way. It's worked out for me great. As long as you leave a thick layer of mulch, you won't have uh, those weed problems going through because it'll keep it cooler. I mean, of course, it'll get hot and stuff, but it won't it won't germinate the weed seeds as easily as if you have a thin layer of mulch with weed fabric because, I mean, it's still close to the ground. I do treat the borders with uh, Preen um, weed, weed Preventer, and that does help too from the seeds germinating. So just keep it around the plants, don't not to the root of the ball or anything close to the plant, just around. If you see anything coming up that's pretty bad and you haven't caught it too late, I do spray it with the herbicide and let it die off and then I'll pull it out. And I mean, it's been working out great. Uh, my bird, my other borders have, you know, worked out and I've done this one the same way I've done the other ones. Same technique, same style, everything I did on the other ones, I did here. Um, all right, guys. Hope you enjoy this video. This is Rossex Carrillo with a different video and hope you like it. Peace.